Hype TV people! Right then, this is the start of a garage conversion that we're doing. And uh, obviously I've done quite a few garage conversions, but this one's a little bit different. So the ones we've done before have had a timber floor put in. This one's actually having a screeded floor. Not a great deal of difference, but I'm going to show you what we've done and why we're doing it that way. So first things first, um, we were actually called out to this property because a previous builder had started the work and the, the client wasn't happy with the work. So we've come in there, big guns, and sorted it all out. So as you can see, we've patched in all the brickwork now. Lovely job done by Mr. Rich. There he is, look. He's silent but deadly. He doesn't say much, but he's f***ing mustard he is. <laughs> right then, so we have taken the original damp proof course. So the, the way we find that is on these particular houses right here. Let's see if we can come in a little bit close. You'll see a little bit of a black line. That black line is generally asbestos or plastic, and that's the DPC. So that's the that's the that's the height of the floor that we're going to try and achieve. That's and that's putting the brickwork to stop damp coming up through the um, the bricks at the bottom through the capillary action. It'll hit that and can't pass through it. So then the bricks the bricks above then stay dry. Um, so some other interesting things, we've actually had the building inspector out on this one and what we've had to do is actually drill the concrete floor because the building inspector wanted it to be six inches. Um, so we did a test hole and the reason it wants it to see if it's six inches is because he wants to make sure that the concrete bed that the wall is sitting on is substantial enough to take that much weight. If I'm honest, I think it's more than fine but he wants more concrete put in. So what we're going to have to do is dig a patch up here dig down and do what's, some, what's called underpinning. So what we'll have to do is dig a hole underneath where the brickwork is here and fill it with some more concrete. Um, I'll show you how to do that when we come to do it. But that's something we have to do. So good little tip there for you when you come to do a garage conversion, always consider to make sure if the concrete slab is sufficient enough to take the additional weight that you're going to put on there. Good little tip there, folks. Um, so the wind is actually in order and I'm going to take you through what we've actually done. So like I say, this one, uh, I'm doing this a little bit backwards because we've actually packed up and boarded the butt front up, as you can see. So I can't actually crawl through that. So now I'm going to crawl through the little window and big bloke, small spaces, doesn't really work. So, let's see. That one day. Beautiful. Beautiful. Right then. So we are in said garage conversion. So as I've previously said, this one's going to have a screeded floor. So we haven't completely finished the prep. If I'm honest, we were open, the building inspector was just going to let us take some photographs of what we've done so far and pass it because he came out this morning to see we had to drill an inspection hole in the actual concrete slab to see how thick it was. Um, but he wouldn't accept that. He's quite insistent that he wants to come out and see the prep so far. So what have we done? So it's very, very much the same as a timber floor. But the only difference is all we've done is put some DPM down, which is this stuff. So it's basically one, one black sheet and that's covered the entire floor. So we've made it like a cup. So it's coming down there, along the floor and up. We've just got some very simple sticky tape to just stick it to the wall for temporary, just to hold it in place. And then we've literally just got some 75 mil quintherm, which is just these insulation boards. And if I pull this piece out here, we should show you. So there you go. So as you can see, we've got one piece of black membrane there. It goes all the way under, up the other side of the wall, and you literally just lay that straight on top, like so. And that's it, and then what we do is we get some 25 mil up stands, which is just literally some 20, 25 mil thick up insulation, and we just force that down the sides, and that creates a cup. And that does a couple of things, it stops a bit of thermal bridging, which means when we put the slab in, some screed, so we can imagine this is going to be filled with screed to say roughly there, it stops the screed touching the brickwork and it also insulates it from the brickwork to stop the thermal bridging, which is the cold coming through the brickwork and into the slab. 
So quite a simple thing. So that is the difference. But the other parts of this job that we've got to do is we're going to be opening, opening another doorway there. So as you can see, I've already marked out the, uh, the lintel height there with some little crosses. So that's the height of the lintel that's going in. So that will support the door. So we're going to cut down there and there for a doorway into here. Now, interestingly enough, and I've done quite a few of these garage conversions and I've always had to been, I've always been told by the building inspectors that that door needs to be a fire door. And on this one, they're saying it doesn't need to be a fire door. Um, I'm sure different scenarios with regards to the layout of the interior to see if this is a room within a room with a building regs. But I've done the same scenario where the other side of that door there is a front door, which is goes into there. There's a set of stairs that come down and it's a hallway. And all the other ones I've done is I've, I've always put the door from the access from the hallway into the garage conversion. And they've always had to be a fire door. But on this one, we're saying that it doesn't need to be a fire door, but it's always worth to get your building inspector to come out and do a site visit and find out exactly what they want to make sure that it's qualifying because otherwise you can leave yourself with quite a shortfall. Because if a builder's come out and done what he thinks needs doing and then the building inspector says otherwise, you're then going to hit with lots of nasty extras. Uh, and that's not necessarily the builder's fault. It's obviously the building, the building officer is the guy that's in charge of the project and it's what he wants to give you a certificate. So you need to do what he says at the end of the day. And again, I've done quite a few of these and I've never had to, I've always had to put a fire door on there, but I've got to put an internal on this one. So that's going to save the client a bit of money. So that's always good. However, on this one, we've actually got to dig up an underpin underneath there to increase the thickness of the concrete to take the weight of that wall. Um, so, but what I'm trying to do to work with a client is rather than putting another skin of brick on the inside, so it's got two courses of brick, which are going to increase the weight. I'm actually just going to run a studded wall inside there. And actually we're going to run a studded wall all the way around here. It's going to be completely independent from the existing walls. So there's no thermal bridging. Inside the stud is going to be 50 mil um, king span. And then on the top of it, we're going to put a 37 and a half mil plasterboard over the top of all of it. So it's going to have a total of 75 mil insulation on the walls. It's going to have 75 mil in the floor. And then we need 270 mil in the loft space. So insulation, insulation, insulation. So hopefully there's a couple of good tips in there for you folks. Always get your building inspector out and, and clarify what it is that he wants and make sure that you've got that, preferably before you give a builder an opportunity to quote so you can tell the builder what exactly needs to be done. And that's it from me on this one, folks. I shall do some more progress as we're making more progress. And until then, I'll see you soon. Mwah.